Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a fun game to share with you. Recently, a friendly game was played between Judith Polgar on the white end and Magnus Carlsen. This took place in a park in Madrid during the final rest day of the Candidates Tournament. And whenever two greats are at the board, it's always a fun game to have a look at. There's banter going on, nice little crowd. Let's dive in and see how this one played out and how the world champ was taken down in only 19 moves. Came out of an open Sicilian, Taimanov. And the first interesting point is right about move number 12, right here. So, white on move, e5. Immediately throwing a punch to this knight. Big decision. In the game, knight takes g4 is on board. Considered one of the better moves is to centralize not go pawn hunting, not allow open files. We'll see how this causes a great inconvenience to black in the game, picking off the g4 pawn. The reply to knight d5, best would be knight e4, kind of juking the knight and eyeing up this potential jump, maybe opening up this diagonal. Okay, not going to go too deep into these lines. It's only a three-minute game, by the way. So in the game, it was knight takes g4, taking advantage of this pin. Rook g1 as the follow-up does unpin the pawn, and now this threat is actually there in a couple ways. The reply was knight h6. Uh, this is the only moment I'm really going to draw some attention to and show some lines. Uh, I did, even though it is a 3-0 game, I did take a, uh, a mini lesson from this uh, moment in the game, so... Uh, if the pawn is knocked out, the reply here, best reply, would be bishop to g2. And uh, if we, if the bishop captures the bishop, this will be a big problem for black. Notice the double attack with the queen on g2. One of these will soon fall. White is winning. And if instead of bishop takes bishop, bishop takes rook, we would have bishop takes rook and... White will be getting one of these two uh, soon enough. White's going to be up a piece, but black does have some pawns. Uh, one other line would be knight h2. That can be met with queen f4. And after bishop takes rook, bishop takes rook. Once more, black is in a spot where one of these two minors will fall. Final line is this one right here. I question queen c6. That won't work out either. After bishop takes, queen takes, there's rook g3, kicking the queen to f5, and now once more we see this nice little maneuver with the queen to d2. Once more, a double attack to the rook and knight. White will be winning from this position. Okay. Black does not bite, does not take a second pawn, instead withdraws the knight. Some more development. Not caring to defend this pawn. If the pawn is captured, uh, well, that's going to translate into another open file for the white pieces. Black still has to find safe ground for the king. No G pawn now. There's a lot of heat uh, down this king side of the board. So uh, what was played is bishop to f8. Not a fun move to play at all under developing, but that was considered best. Um... Uh, if you castle like this, you're initially I thought you're killed in this way. But even better is rook takes g7. And this is leading to mate. It's calling for a mate in five right now. With this sequence, all you could do is computer like moves, delaying mate like this. And soon enough, we're going to have mate next move. Three different mates. Can't parry them all. Okay. What was played in the game? Bishop f8. Bishop e4, it's a fairly even position right here until black's next move. Rook c8. Pop quiz, the only one of this video. Can you spot Judith's killer move? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. Bishop to b6, and this is basically game over. What's the problem? If the bishop is captured, that's mate. 
Uh, there's no hiding on F8 there after that underdeveloping move. Uh, and there is no safe square for the queen. Right? She she need, she has a responsibility to defend D7. So this was this was missed. Would have would have been better instead of rook to C8 is to initiate this exchange. Um, yeah, this was also interesting for me to for me to see. I was thinking initially uh, w you would recapture with the knight, eyeing up these squares. But after knight to F5, that's also a pretty good square. The computer says after this move, white should be doubling the pawns like this to n to keep this knight sidelined. That's considered best. All right. In the game, it was rook c8, bishop b6 on board, and the queen is toast. And this game is this game is over. Out of momentum, some some more moves were played. Out of momentum, but this game is long gone at this stage. After knight f5, knight e4, that's it. Carlson extended his hand and resigns after just these 19 moves. So uh, just a fun game here between two greats. Always nice to see uh, Judith back at the board. Uh, she did retire in 2014. So whenever we get to see another game by her, it's always, uh, for me at least, I like to uh, check it out. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and, yeah, found it a little fun. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.